Often, business analysis is described as translating business needs into solution requirements. This sounds so simple. However, in truth, there are many steps and techniques that are used in order to get to the final solution requirements. To keep things simple, I'm going to categorize the work into three main categories, understanding the business goals, understanding the current state, and defining the required changes. There are other peripheral activities of a business analyst, but those are often dependent on seniority, if you are a contractor, or if you're specifically doing waterfall, so I'll skip those. The techniques mentioned are generally accepted as being useful for accomplishing the tasks. However, it is always up to you to determine the best way to accomplish each major step. So let's get started. Understanding the goals of the business is critical to being a good business analyst because part of your job is keeping your team, both business and IT, on the path to success. At this point, you are simply trying to define why everyone is doing what they are doing. Depending on your work environment, this might be at a program level, project level, product level, or feature level. For your part, the techniques you will likely use will be workshops and interviews to gather the information. Your output will likely be a business case, epic hypothesis statement, or some type of charter that states the goal state of what you intend to do. Here is likely when you'll create or start creating your stakeholder list or map so you can understand who all will be impacted so you know who to contact, reference, or keep informed as the initiative continues. At this point, you will likely be keeping it simple and the tools will be something like Word, PowerPoint, or perhaps Excel, very text-based. Next up is understanding the current state of things and the techniques or tools you choose to use are very dependent on the types of changes that will be made. Here, you might start out with mind maps or context models that will basically lay out your landscape, help you get an idea of the different parts of the organization that are involved or are impacted by the area that needs to change. The tools here can vary. All purpose modeling tools like Visio, Lucidchart, or Draw.io might be used. PowerPoint can also be used if the model um, won't get too heavy or large. From there, you might have interviews, workshops, document analysis, and other activities that essentially allow you to collect the information you need. The collection of that information will result in the documentation of that information. The goal of all this documentation is to ensure that all parties involved understand how things work currently um, and will eventually serve to point out the areas that need to change. This is where you'll see the big heavy hitters for business analysts like process models, decision models, business rules, data models, data flow diagrams, and so forth. Here, once again, you can use the all-purpose modeling tools like Visio, Lucidcharts, or Draw.io, um, and many more for almost all the models. You can also use specific business process modeling tools like Bizagi, for example. The true value of all that work comes when you get to the next step, which is defining what needs to be changed. Here, once again, you'll need to work with the stakeholders, have workshops, interviews, focus groups, and other ac collaborative activities to understand what should change and who gets impacted when you make the change. Changes might need to be made to the business process and then all the applications that support the business process will sub subsequently need to make some changes. You might also need to make changes to the data or how the data is collected or moved around. All the applications that interact with that data or business process that use that data might need to make adjustments as well. The correctness of all the models you created will impact how effectively the changes you decide to make will be. Conversely, it will determine how many problems you introduce into the applications or process by ineffectively understanding how they worked and what would break when you uh, change things. This right here is why a business analyst is so important. If you compare this to my vacation planning comparison that I use in my requirements elicitation video, it would be like missing that someone is allergic to something when making dinner reservations or someone can't leave until a certain date when buying plane tickets. Here you are analyzing the models you created and creating future states of those models which will help you see the areas where changes will need to be made. In addition to modeling, other techniques might be impact analysis, root cause analysis, and business process simulation if you use the fancy BPMN tool like Bizagi. Functional decomposition is a very common way to begin documenting what needs to change. For example, if a high-level business requirement feature or whatever is starting to accept payments online, that functionality might break down into being able to input credit card information, being able to validate credit card information, being able to store new 
and being able to store new payment related data in the database. You can already see that this will result in new UI components, new data interfaces to perhaps third party credit card validators and changes to the database structure and likely and likely much more depending on the complexity of your fulfillment systems. These changes will be documented as business requirements, functional requirements, use cases, user stories, wireframes, prototypes, accept, acceptance criteria, and more. Here again, you might keep it simple with tools like Word, PowerPoint, or Excel. You might have dedicated lifecycle management tools like Jira Agile, Trello, or version one if you're agile. Likely this will be dictated by the organization, mostly for long-term quality control purposes. It's important to remember that you don't originate any of the data that goes into your documentation. You gather it from stakeholders who are responsible for the success of their domains, and you also aren't the final consumer of any of that documentation either. Others need it to understand impacts, make decisions, and eventually develop the functionality. This is why interaction skills, communication skills, analytical thinking skills are so critically important to a successful business analysis. I know I went through that pretty fast and I didn't dig too deep into the individual techniques or tools. I'll leave links to the tools I mentioned in the description plus a few more. If you have questions about any of the specifics of this video or business analysis in general, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you there or I'll create a new video to answer you specifically. So subscribe and see your questions get answered. Thanks for watching.